Howdy folks, before we get into this episode, I just want to let you all know, I've got a Twitter now. So if you want to see some sneak peeks for the episodes, exclusive doodles, things that aren't just sidled on, feel free to check it out. The other day I redrew some Fakemon as if it was in the 2D kind of gold and silver art style, so if you want to see the rest of those, feel free to give that a little check out. I personally love how bootleg they kind of look. And also, like always, if you want to check out something spooky, check my John Lovely channel, it's slightly spooky stick, man. But either way, onto the episode. Welcome back to Making a Fakemon Region, the show where I'm making a fictional landmass based around all the cults of the world, all mashed into one, and I'm making a bunch of fictional monsters to live on that land. Types, types, and types. Although I will be showing off new designs in this episode, I think altogether like six, maybe five. This episode is primarily about the new type system, what I'm implementing. For those who don't know, last episode I kind of mentioned that although I call it Fakemon and joke about calling it Fakemon and Pokemon, it's Sidelmon, it's its own thing. If I ever wanted to make a game about this in the future, I wouldn't want to make it a Fakemon game, I'd rather call it a Sidelmon game and make it more of a more original thing, right? So with that, I've spent the last few weeks trying to work around the whole new type system. I've added a bunch of new types, I've changed a bunch of pre-existing ones, and I've kept some the same, and that's what this episode's about. I'm going to be going through all the types, explaining what the new types are now and what all the fake ones we've got so far are those types. Right? Right. So let's start off with the new kind of plant type. If you think about it, grass type doesn't necessarily make sense because although grass is a plant, not all plants are grass. Well, I, I think about it. How many Pokemon, actual Pokemon, can you actually think what are specifically about grass? Not a lot. So here I've changed it into a plant type, so that way it makes a bit more sense that they are what they are. I should mention, the main thought process behind each type isn't necessarily about the type, but the fact that they're elements. These monsters are defined by the elements what are either inside of them or the elements that they can use to battle, right? So for example, what makes a plant type a plant type is a monster what can specifically Rather, is a literal plant, therefore its element is that of a plant, or the fact that it can use plant elements to help battle it or help survive, right? For example, the three grass starters and the two pseudo starters, Cuptus, Prothectus, Almitus, Shamelon, and Terrafelon, are all plant types because, well, they are literal plants, they have that element. And the other two that are plant type because they are literal plants is Stoom, the mushroom, and Snatrix, the grass snake. Although it is a snake, it being based on grass snakes, it is, I always imagine its body literally being made of grass, so. Do you know, technically it is a grass type, but plant, right? Now, for those who remember, I introduced Stoom from one of my first ever Fake One episodes. Don't watch it, it's terrible. Now, when I drew Stoom, I actually drew him an evolution based on another evolution I did. I drew Stoom years ago, and its evolution years ago, and I redrew it a couple years ago as well. However, looking at it, I don't think it's... It's too similar to its original, so let's give it a little redraw, shall we? And I guess this also gives a bit of time to actually explain what Stoom is. I won't explain what Snatrix is, because uh, they'll have their own episode eventually anyway. And if you see any other fake from what you want to learn more about, check out the channel, there's loads of videos about them. But anyway, Stoom and its evolution called Mr. Caps are both based on, obviously, mushrooms, and how some people can use mushrooms to gain, how to speak, psychedelic effects. The first form evolution, Stoom, spends more or less all of its day sitting in the sun, staring into the distance in its own head, more or less just doing nothing. <laughs> However, its evolution, Mr. Caps, well, I guess it gets so high on its own psychedelic effects where it opens up its mind. It's got an invisible third eye, what it can use to see the, the mojo of people. It can tell if you've got good vibes or bad vibes. It knows whether to try and pass around the good vibes or if it's just want to stay away from you. But either way, he's not much of a fighter. He just likes to chill out and, like I said, pass around the nice, happy vibes. Originally, I was just going to keep his cap green, but I realised, given it pink, first of all, would make it a lot more, like, popping out compared to its uh, pre-evolution. And also the fact that it's all meant to be psychedelic, I feel like green and purple and pinkish are all kind of the colours that clash and make it... I was originally going to make it yellow and purple, but meh. Maybe that could be for a shiny. Ooh. I don't know why I record whenever I'm in a silly mood. Yeah, whatever. Well, there you go. The new Mr. Caps. Its name being from Mystic, Mr. Colon, Caps, because mushroom caps. We're not done with the plant type though, however. The mineral, rubine, and envirodon are both part plant type, along with chivine. 
again, a design I've mentioned in like the first ever episode, never watch it, they're bad. Anyway, although these three aren't necessarily made of plants, they both are essentially covered in plants, right? Arubian and Environment both have giant biomes on their backs, and Chi Vine's got, well, vines and plants growing on it because it lives in a jungle. They don't have the core plant element inside of them, they've got it outside of them, and they can use it to survive and battle, right? And the final plant type we've got is Thorngents. And the reason he's a plant type is simply just because, well, he's infused with that element. Although he's not literally a plant or has plants on him, he's still infused with that core element. Those purple spikes radiate pure plant energy, right? You can, he, he makes plants grow just by stepping on them sort of thing. He radiates plant energy. So he's a plant. So now on to fire type. This one's pretty easy to explain. A fire type is a fire type because it rather has fire on it or again, uses fire to battle. I swear some of the lighter types get a bit more interesting. Just keep, keep, stay with me for them. So again, we've got the three fire starters, Pipe Up, Disgain and Dredgehog. Beings what literally have a mass of fire on them. And then we've got Froxy and Festion. Although they don't literally have fire on them, they've got, they've, they've got like an organ what produces fire inside of them, right? So they can breathe fire and their fur is always warm. And the same goes for Hinozaru. He, he's not literally made of fire, but he's got fire inside of him, what always makes steam and everything, so he's got fire inside of him, so fire. And the two last fire types are beings what aren't literally made of fire or have fire inside of them but they can make or use fire externally to help them in battle. So, Artichef and the Fire Stingbee. Artichef, being a chef, has found out how to make mini fires to cook things, and Stingbee's whole gimmick is that it flaps its wings so quick it generates fire. So, although none of them have fire inside of them, if you've got resistance to it because, well, they can utilize it in battle. Now on to water types. Again, a really easy type to explain. They rather live in water, have the water element, or have a resistance to water, right? Which is literally more or less all water types we have right now, so... Oh boy, let's see if I remember the wall. We've got the three starters, Confuzzle, Eccentrex, and Cyrech. Uh, the two Swamp Rubines and Virodents. The two Pseudo starters, Frilling and Anatador. Uh, Tushido, Kashingio, and Bivui. Huh, I guess I just dropped a brand new fake Come on, didn't I? Bivui is mixed between uh, ocean mines, beavers, and buoys. He gets his tail to grapple to the bottom of ponds and uh, lakes, and his fuzzy little body just floats to the top. He's like a little mine, but he's all fuzzy and cute. And I love him. And I realized, I, I learned this the other day, beavers have iron in their teeth, to the point where their teeth actually become like that color, because like bronze, like, Iron. I think it's iron. Let me just check. It is the iron! I thought that was a really cute fact, and then I like the idea that it's got a little taste, like a little fuzzball mine. I thought that's cute. Bivui. A mix between beaver and buoy. We'll learn more about him in a future episode where I actually give it an evolution look. For now, there you go. But anyway, all those faking on what I just said are all based around monsters or animals that all live underwater. You got jellyfish, uh, ducks, uh, tuna, mermaids, swamp rats. All what have lived in the water for so long that they've evolved the element to utilize the water for battle and survival. The only other water type what technically doesn't fall under this is Sinozaru, and that's because well, although he does spend all of his time in hot springs, which are water, it's more so the fact that the water sticks to his fur so we can use that as an external source to battle, right? But either way. Bug types! Now this one was a tricky one, and I know what you're thinking. Well, it's easy to see what a bug type is. They're a bug. That's right, but bug isn't an element. Remember, going through all these types, I'm, I'm more so thinking about the element of that type, but bug isn't necessarily an element. I struggled on this for ages, by the way. You know, I've had friends tell me to stop going online and that I've been spending too much time on bugs, but I had to find this out. Either way, though, I came up with the in-game reasoning that all these bugs just so happen to have a bug element because all bugs, coincidentally, have the exact same weaknesses and strengths to the point where every bug more or less just came under its own type. Does that even make the slightest bit of sense? If not, well oops, but bugs don't make sense anyway, so it's fine. I was really considering removing the bug type, but then I'm looking at some of these designs and it's like, they need to be bugs, but it's not an element. I was really struggling on this. But like I said, I just decided to make it so all bugs are, are a compl since bugs are their own subspecies of animals anyway, all bugs just have their own subspecies of type, I guess, right? Uh, it'll, it'll do for now. So with that out of the way, bugs are incredibly easy to explain because all bug types are, well, bugs. 
You've got Constantly, Arty Beetle and Arty for Chef, all based around lady beetles and lady bugs. You've got Caterpillar, Kakupsi, Skinfly, all based around well, caterpillars and butterflies. Larvae, Hakuni, both sting bees, based around bees and I guess kind of butterflies again. Uh, Carino and Meal, both based on ants. And yeah, that's all bugs. And then we've got Pixel Type, the brand new type I introduced last episode. The reason why they're pixels is because, well, they were made by... They are made of pixels. They were specifically designed to live in a digital world. They have digital flesh. Although they have real minds and thoughts and cognitive aspirations, they are made of pixels. They are a pixel type. So that's Pixicotto, Pidgeol, Valerus, Centimini, and uh, Distortion. All made out of pixels, so they're all a pixel type. Then the next type is Electric. It's a pretty simple type, we've only got three moles in this category so far, and that is just, is electrical. That's the Electrical Rubin, Enviridon, and Dredgehog. I guess Dredgehog's uh, electrics more so the fact that the organ what produces fire in its body just evolved to adapt to electricity, and since it's based around music and rock, it's got an electric guitar, so electric. Whilst the Rubin and Enviridon were specifically turned into electricals because of the humans bred them to conduct electricity basically. Right, now on to fighting type. Again, this is a type I had to change around a little bit because to me it didn't make sense because fighting isn't really an element now, is it? I feel like the point of fighting is that it's a power without the need of an element to back it up. So I guess that is what fighting is. It is a specific gift or ability what doesn't necessarily need it to be aided by uh, uh, an ability. An example would be if you've got a fire punch, the element fire is what's mostly doing the damage. But if you've just got a regular punch, the mon itself has got such power behind it that it's a fighting type move, right? So I guess the same would work for the monsters themselves. If a monster could run really quickly, then it's expected that it's an electric type. But if it, if it can do it without the ability of an extra element, then it's fighting type. It's the fighting alone what's making it go so quick. It's its pure strength. Does that even make sense? No idea. Basically, it's a power type. What doesn't need an extra element to make it an actual power. Now, when the fighting type, it's more so a sport type, right? Because, well, that's what sporting is. It's strength, it's uh, ability, it's speed, without the need of an element. So the six fighting types based around sports are three footballing armadillos, armor skillo, armor skeeper, and armor skielder. All based around footballers, fighting, sport. Almightus is based around fighting, although it's more of a boxing. He, you know, he doesn't want to specifically fight for the sake of fighting. Again, it's more of a sportsmanship to them. Then we've got Skidderfly, the skateboarding butterfly. Skateboarding is a sport, so it falls under that. And I didn't even realise that skateboarding was in the last year's... Well, I guess this year's Tokyo Olympics. That was a fun fact to learn. And then we've got Kleeper, the cleaning kappa monster. Kleeper is based around kappas, a Japanese water yokai monster. Um, kappas tend to enjoy wrestling each other or sumo wrestling to be more specific, and sumo wrestling is a sport, so creep is a fighting type. Then the last fighting type we've got, which is a fighting type because it actually specifically likes to fight and not isn't just for sport, a natador. They you know they don't enjoy fighting specifically but they have to fight to keep their habitat safe. They fight a lot, they're a fighting type, sorted. Now we got the poison type. Again, which is weird to think, because poison itself, I guess just means painful to others, but like so could fire and water and electric, but Either way. I guess in this case, poison is something what hurts the specific biology of living beings. It does, you know, it does harm to the specific, you know, skin tissues, the cells, chemical things, right? So the first two poison types, the Swamp, Rubin, and Envirodon. They're both poison type, not because they specifically have that element in them, but they've, since they live in swamps so much surrounded by murky sludge and poison, they've built resistances to poison to the point where they can well, excrete it and use it as an attack. The idea is that all their fur absorb absorbs the poison so it doesn't get to their skin, and they can just splash it out to attack others, right? And they're also based on swamp rats, rats being notoriously bad for if they bite you, you'll probably get something really badly ill. <laughs> then the next two ones we've got, Cleeper again, and Arty Beetle. Neither of them are specifically poisonous, but they've got external poison. I guess technically the same could be said for the previous two Ruby and Enviro, but either way. Arty Beetle is not poisonous at all, however it uses paint from berries what are poisonous, so it has poisonous attacks. 
and Cleeper's arms are pure soap. Which isn't poisonous, but soap is a chemical and it technically falls under the poison element. So, in the future if I ever make a soap type, I guess I'll change Cleeper to be soap. But for now, it's poisonous. And the last four poison types are poison because, well, they've got poison inside of them. They are very much specifically poisonous in their element. They are toxic. Ve venomous, technically. I guess venomous would be the better word to describe them here. Venomous essentially means that the way that you're getting poisoned is by them specifically biting you. So if you're eating the berry, well then it's a poisonous berry. But if the berry grew uh, teeth and bit you, then it's a venomous berry, right? So we've got Shamelon and Terrafelon, both based around watermelons and uh, fly-eating plants. Both filled to the brim with toxic red poison. Then we've got Snatrix, what again is a poisonous grass snake, so poisonous. Although I think in the real world grass snakes aren't necessarily poisonous, but it's a literal snake, grass snake, I have to make it. it's poison. And Vilaris, it's a corruption monster, what poisons the world around it, it is a toxic being poison. Now we're on to psychic types. So far there's two reasonings to be a psychic type so far. The main one being having intellect or otherworldly knowledge. To me, psychic type is also more of a psychic skill, right? Monsters that are incredibly smart or have notable intellect, to me, are, you know, they count as a psychic type despite not necessarily having literal psychic powers, they're just very smart or at least have an incredible knowledge of certain things. So Festion being a great example of being smart, it's an incredibly intelligent animal as it constantly asks questions and it can very much understand English and eventually learn to actually write in English or whatever language it wants to speak in. Plus it's got a constant psychic bubble around it, what confuses people what, whenever they go near it. So yeah, psychic type. Then we've got Stoom and Mr. Caps again, the two uh, sun-dazing shrooms who spend most of their day just relaxing their mind to the point where Mr. Caps learns to open it up. Whoa. Again, not necessarily have psychic powers, but it's incredibly smart. It's opened its third eye to the mystic realm of the universe. It knows so much, yet it will very likely never say what it sees. Then Sirechd, essentially a jellyfish witch, what enjoys being crazy and her whole gimmick is that she is slightly bonkers. She loves it though. She writes her own movies and stage plays. She knows more or less everything about anything. She loves learning. She loves writing things about the things she learns. And like I said, she's a witch. She loves crafting potions, I guess. She might also be an underwater demon. Science hasn't come back on that yet. But either way, psychic type. Plus, when he was a little confuzzle, it enjoys confusing people. And even as a sirech, it enjoys using all of its long limbs to confuse people. So, psychic. Then the last psychic type is defined specifically by, well, having a literal psychic power. Although not literally psychic, it's got some mystical power we cannot comprehend. This is Chi Chi, the counterpart to Chi Vine. I'm trying to think, a year ago when I was asking friends for animal ideas to make monsters one, I got told to make one based on parrots, and I thought, since there's parrots all over the world, I decided to make three parrot mons based around the different locations parrots can appear in. Chi Vine being based around jungles, I believe specifically the Amazon rainforest, and Chi Chi was based on the idea that out of the three, I wanted one that was super weak but would evolve to be one of the strongest. And when doing research into some Hinduism beliefs, I found Garuda, the king of the birds. A giant, beautiful, powerful bird god, essentially. And although it's obviously not gold now, the reason I made it pink was because, well, it's a flightless, it's a, it's a featherless bird, it's a weakling little runt, so that was the point of it. And the name Chi Chi comes from the fact that, well, Chi comes from Chick, and then Chi comes from Chick. And the fact that Chi can also mean life force kind of worked into the whole psychic thing, but mostly it was because Chick Chick. Because Chi Vine, because of the rainforests, Chick Chick. It's a little baby runt. What's the third pirate then? Well, let's go into flying type and find out. Here is Chival. All right, now we've all seen Rio. I, I see you in the back, pretending that you haven't. We've all seen it, don't lie. As mediocre as some people may say that movie is, the, the spectacle of the animation of all the festivals was beautiful. And they made a real festival based on the movie people. Dumb jokes aside, Brazil is a beautiful place with loads of cool, awesome festivals. And I wanted to make the parrot a walking festival, basically, right? But anyway, now that we've gotten that out of the way, we've kind of jumped in a little bit here because I said we're going into flying type, I've removed the flying type. Dun dun dun! 
Well, because thinking about it, flying type, again, does not make sense to me. Looking into the beta files of Gen 1, we now know that there was originally going to be a bird type, similar to how there's a dragon type and a bug type. However, the reason they removed the bird type is because they realised not every bird type was a bird. Butterfl Butterfree and Beedrill can both fly, but they're not birds. Scyther is not a bird. Gyarados sure as hell is not a bird. So they changed it to flying. But to me, flying isn't really an element. Again, flying is an ability, it's not necessarily an element. Not every flying mon can fly, which again never made sense to me because why is it a flying type if you can't fly, right? Right. So this is an easy change to me, I'm just a simple one. I'm changing the flying element to a wind element. I'm not the first one to make a wind element, most RPGs have a wind element. So it just made more sense to replace the flying with wind. So that way, not everyone who can use the wind element can necessarily fly, but they've got, they've had, they've got the ability to utilise, you know, wing or air-based moves. That's what wind is. These three parrots are all part wind. Not all of them can necessarily fly, but they've all got abilities what would inherit them having wind abilities. You know, they can flap their wings to flow throw gusts of air at you, you know? The other wind types would be Minimin, Delimin and Indimin. Again, none of them are specifically flying, they're based on mining birds, they're always going to be down in the mine, but they've got, you know, they have wings to flap air, they are wind types. And then the other three are the Honey Sting Bee, Pidgeol, and Distortion, because, like I said, they've all got wings, they can all fly, they can all utilise air-based attacks. The only two wind types so far what can't actually fly but can still utilise air attacks are Bleg and Pryliant. Although I'm not 100% sure if Pryland can actually fly yet or not, they're both based on flightless birds, so that, I, I thought they'd fit in this category for now at least. Now we've got another brand new type, and you've already seen all the monsters with this type so far. Chival, Bleg, and Pryland. And they're all part fair. no. No fairy type. Again, I'm changing fairy type because to me being a fairy doesn't make sense. It makes more sense because fairy can actually be used to describe something. It's a fey magic, you know. But here I'm making a new type what is just called magic type. What makes a magic type, you ask? Well, in some senses it is more or less very similar to the fairy type. The fairy type's all sweet and bouncy and pure. You know, fairy type is more or less the magic type. However, in this region, uh, Although I don't talk about it in this episode because I don't actually have any dark type ones yet. Dark type is going to be more of a dark magic type of type, right? In Pokemon, dark is more or less an evil type. And I'm still going to be using that, but it's going to be more like dark magic type. So magic is more or less the good magic type. It brings happiness. Magic is powered by emotion, happiness. Again, ability. It's, you know, magic is literally just... Like magic, real magic. It's not just a magic trick, it's real magic. If one of them was to use flamethrower, you know, it would be a magic flame, not literal fire, right? It's more or less just a pure type. It's a it's a type what isn't defined by any specific element other than the fact that it is just element, you know? Magic element. It's theorized that, you know, in the evolutionary line of all these monsters, magic type was probably the first actual special type. You know, after all the physical normals, fightings and rocks, magic was the first pure magic type. There you go. And speaking of rock types, we've only got two so far. Indymin and Speak No Zari. And they're both rock type for the same reason. They have rocks on them. <laughs> Not a literal rock, they don't have the rock element inside of them. However, Speak Nozaru has rocks all over his fur, and Indymin has essentially grown like clay claws on its wings what are made out of stone, and its tip of the beak is essentially cemented over now. Both of their attacks rely on their stones, to the point where it is now part of their element. Now on to Ice Type. Again, Ice Type was an odd one for me because I could have just made it water, but then I realised I've got a little snowball here that has to be ice somehow. So we've only got four Ice Types, all part of the same evolutionary line, See Nozaru, hear Nozaru, speak Nozaru, and Naru. All ice types because, well, they live in icy and snowy regions, and they're all used to the snow to the point where, again, it's their element now. They've lived in the ice for so long, it is what resembles them. You know, simple. And you know what? It's taken us so long. Normal type. The easiest to explain, more or less. Normal. Essentially typeless. They don't have any external elements. They are just... It's just them. Normal. So we've got the the plain, Rubin and Envirodent. Both based on kangaroo mice, both are mice, both don't have any elements. Let's have two more. Here are Shadeland and Merryhew, both based on sheep. Shadeland being based on the Shetland sheep, and Merryhew being based on the Merino sheep. 
Again, I drew these two about a year ago when I first drew all the other starters, and I just really like the idea of having a sheep where you could dye the wall, kind of like Minecraft, but it actually made a difference in battle. And then I liked the idea so much that I made it into two different ideas, one being offensive and one being defensive. You see, their gimmick is, is that outside of battle, you can change their form by dyeing their fur or feeding them different foods to change the colour of their fur. And the de depending on the colour of their fur will essentially give them a secondary type. However, both sheep take that second type in different ways. Shadeland, the one on the left here, is the offensive type. Whatever the colour of her fur is, her normal type attacks will then do stab damage of whatever type her colour is. If her fur is blue, her normal type attacks will now do water type attacks. And she will get stab bonuses on those water type attacks. Stab bonuses mean same type attack bonus, it's, it's complicated. However, Shadeland's relatively frail, and with her new type, she also gains that type's weakness. So, Dire Blue, yes you can do water type attacks, but she's now also gained all of Water's weaknesses. I should also mention that Shadeland doesn't gain Water type's resistances, only the weaknesses, and she still has her normal type ones as well. Mary Hugh, on the other hand, is more or less the exact opposite. Whatever colour you dye him, let's say orange to be fire, he won't be able to do fire type attacks, but he gains all fire type's resistances, even though he can't actually attack with fire type moves. However, he will at least get secondary abilities when other people monsters attack him. Say he's got the fire coat on, there's a high chance that if he gets attacked by physical attack, they will still get burned. If he's got the water coat on, then they might get slowed down. If he's got the bug one, they'll just collapse to the ground, I guess, I don't know. There you have it, Shadeland and Maryhew. Shadeland being a mix between Shetland and Shade, and Maryhew being a mix of Merino and Mary and, and Hugh. Huge missed opportunity because I could have done Mary Ew because Ew is a female sheep, but Mary Hughes comes exclusively male and Shadelands are exclusively female, so the Shadelands would be the Ew's, but yeah, whatever. Two rainbow colourful sheeps. I hope you all like them. Right, next type. Another new type, kind of. Although I've got no problem with ground types, I did think that with some of the monster ideas I've got in stock, it would be best to at least upgrade ground a bit. Mainly because of one of the monsters, Carbon the coal rabbit, as ground would have suited it perfectly, but it's coal, so I wanted it to be weak to fire, and yet I couldn't just make a coal type just for two mons, could I? Either way though, I upgraded ground type to be a mineral type. What makes a mineral type a mineral type? Essentially being based around anything in the ground, and well, what the ground also can produce. So things like ores, I guess like, <laughs> you know, minerals, like diamonds, rubies, gems, Fossils. It's more or less a ground type, but it also covers everything in the ground as well. And we've got four of them. The Mineral Rubin and Environant, and the Coal Rabbits, Charbon and Lapindus. All mineral types because their body is mainly composed of minerals or things from the ground essentially. So next type, again another brand new type, Sugar. I always liked the idea of ever since humans have started making sugar and started farming it, a few animals got addicted to it, and that became their element, just sugars basically, right? I don't know why, that was always like a cool idea to me. So, sugar type, here we go. Say that, the two main sugar types, the meal and carino, are not addicted to sugar, they are honey ants. So, honey is made of sugars, they're sugar bug. They mostly carry honey with them, or have weapons made of pure honey, so their attacks are honey type, or sugar type basically, right? And then Woocha, which is based around fizzy sodas and uh, celebrating. So, sweets, sugars, you know, sodas and fizzy drinks are made out of sugars, and it's having a sweet old time, sugar, so there you go, pure sugar. Although, if we ever made a plastic type, Wucha would also fall into that. But I haven't made one yet, because I don't have any monsters that would fall into that yet. Pretty simple type, right? Sugar type is essentially just a type, a very recent type what animals have obtained simply just because of the sugar industry, or I guess that also includes natural sugars like Kaino and the meal, but. Still, I'll probably do a few more episodes expanding them and adding loads more in the future, but for now, these are the three. Next type is also a kind of new one. Dragon type, again, did not make sense to me because not every dragon type is a dragon, and not every dragon is a dragon type. So I just wanted to make a new type, what was essentially just pure power. Because that's what dragon represents, right? It's not literally being a dragon, it's about being this, you know, extremely powerful deity being. And I couldn't just make a power type, because that seemed a bit too... didn't make sense. So I made a new type called Rage. Rage is more or less exactly what it says on the tin. It's pure 
outed, rage, destruction incarnate. A, a, a destruction type, I guess you could say, right? A pure evil, not even necessarily evil, but a pure energy, power, attack, and element. And so far, I've only got one that falls into this category, and that's Thorngent. And that's just because, well, it's a giant deity being, it has pure rage power inside of it. Rage doesn't necessarily mean anger, it just means extreme destructive power, I guess, right? Maybe I'll change the name in the future. I can't really think of a good name other than Rage, but destructive power type essentially is what that is. And the last monster and last type we've got is a new little monster called Yu Yu. I'll explain Yu Yu in a, f a future episode, but for now, all you need to know is Yu Yu is a ghost, and therefore is a ghost type. Again, now that I think about it, Gen 1 has so many types what are very exclusive. You got the dragons type for dragons. You got you used to have a bird type, a bug type, a ghost type. Again, it's weird when you think about it. But yeah, the ghost element is more or less just the undead magic. It's not dark magic because it's not always evil. It's not good magic because it's not always happy. It's undead magic. It's like necromancy. I think that's the act of like bringing people back to life from the dead or whatever. It's dark. It's it's ghostly magic, right? Ooh, spooky. I can't necessarily explain it very well, but either way. Like I said, I'll explain Yu Yu in a future episode, but yeah, it's just a cute little ghost that likes to uh, inhabit abandoned schools, graveyards, and houses, and things like that. Just a creepy, cute little ghost thing. The word Yu Yu, uh, the name Yu Yu, I should say, comes from the ghost Japanese name Yurei, I think. It's just a cute version of Yurei where it's Yu Yu. It's the two first letters of Yu Yu. It's cute. Whatever. But either way, folks, whoa, boy, that was a doozy of an episode. We went through all, like, 70 different monsters and explained all of their types. Boy, I need a break. But I hope you liked all the explanations and all the new types. Are you excited to see more monsters in different types? Let me know what types you like, what types you think could I could tinker with a little bit. What things I should, you know, do you like the new designs I introduced? Do you not like them? Let me know all of that down below, or if not, whatever. Like I said, I got a Twitter now, so it would, you know, check down if you have a have a mooch at that. I, you know, it's just a new thing I'm trying out because I was bored one day. Woohoo! Either way, folks, thank you all so much for watching. I'll see you all in a bit. Enjoy the rest of your day. We're off to bed. Have the sweetest dreams. I'll see you all later. Toodaloo. Bye!